Go in three, two. Good afternoon. Um, we're going to start with the Northeast Area Middle School preliminary design presentation, after which we'll have the Building and Contracts Committee meeting. Um, I'm going to hand this over to um, Mr. Dixit to proceed with the presentation. So thank you, Ms. Jones. Good evening to everybody. Uh, today we are here for a design presentation for the new Northeast Area Middle School. As part of the capital improvement program, board approved the construction of a new Northeast Area Middle School. It's part of our strategy for relieving the overcrowding of the Northeast Middle School uh, corridor. And uh, while we don't know for sure when it's going to be completed, we are targeting the completion for September of 2024. Uh, this is one of the first few projects that is being funded by Build to Learn Act funding. Um, in the development of the design of the school, we work closely with the administration of the Northeast area, Mr. Dr. George Robert, uh, Ms. Jennifer Mullinex, uh, got a lot of guidance from Superintendent Dr. Williams and his cabinet, and we are especially thankful to Dr. Boswell McComas for her extensive involvement in the design and development of the first, North, first middle school for a long, long time. As you folks know, we have extensive experience with elementary school and high schools. This is the first middle school uh, that we'll be designing and constructing. Also, we had the benefit of uh, uh, a renowned architect, architectural team, um, Mosley Architects, uh, that have done a lot of middle schools uh, for the last several years throughout the country, throughout the Northeast region. So we are thankful to them for designing this. I'd like to introduce my team. Uh, headed by Mike Archbold, who's our chief architect here, manager of planning, Doug Mullins. If Doug, you can open your camera so that everybody can see you. Uh, Doug Mullins is the project architect and project manager for this. And with this, I'm going to give it to Mr. Bill Mosley, um, Bill Brown of Mosley Architect for him to make the presentation and request you to save all the questions till the end. So with that, Mr. Brown, it's all yours. Well, thank you very much, Pete. And uh, I'm uh, pleased to be able to join the board tonight, uh, this afternoon, and, and share the uh, design for the Northeast Area Middle School. Um, just our agenda, uh, we're gonna cover some general information, project goals, um, some value engineering measures, location in the building, and some renderings and to give you a little project uh, schedule overview and then entertain your questions. So the project uh, is located, um, the, it's going on the Nottingham Park site. Um, the uh, overriding goal of the, uh, the design was to really make this project uh, the, uh, learning environment student-centered. Uh, we worked in multiple charrettes with uh, BCPS coming up with a vision and uh, developing the ed specs. The target uh, state rated capacity is uh, 1,410, and it also contains a Magnet Academy for Health Science and Regional Special Ed. So the overarching um, design goals were to create collaborative spaces that supported 21st century learning. Uh, you'll see as we go through the plans, extended learning areas between paired classrooms, uh, uh, team structures around collaborative areas, uh, learning commons, outdoor learning spaces, uh, flexible, very flexible learning spaces. Our uh, sustainable goal is to achieve a LEED uh, silver rating with a real um, focus on ma uh, maximizing energy efficiency. Some of the unique design features include for each grade level, where we have three team learning communities. Um, it's a compact footprint um, with which maximizes daylighting and views. We've standardized classrooms so that they're more flexible and agile. Um, there's a multi-use uh, stage for vocal, uh, music, dance, and performances, and we'll show that a little bit later. We've um, 
And one of the things being on a uh, community park, we have maximized open green space. Um, a lot of uh, investigation was done on the site so that we know what uh, site conditions are to reduce uh, cost and, and time. Um, architectural uh, elements included improving building efficiency, simplifying the footprint, um, and uh, using e uh, exterior metal stud walls in the academic uh, three-story wings. And as I said before, standardizing spaces, standardizing windows and door openings to uh, uh, reduce costs. So uh, the building in the vicinity of the building, you'll find um, the Northeast Area Elementary School on the Ridge Road site, Shady Spring uh, Elementary, um, Orms uh, Elementary, uh, Glenmore Elementary, and Vic Victory, Victory Villa Elementary. Um, as far as middle and secondary, uh, we have the Middle River um, Middle School site and also the Community College of Baltimore uh, County Essex campus. So this is the site um, sort of orient you. Here's King Avenue, which uh, the fronts the site, Stapleford Road, um, and also Red Hill Way back into the uh, community in the back there. And uh, it, it also is bounded by I-95. The property in, uh, includes 5.8 acres of Baltimore County property, and the project site is 35.5 acres uh, total. Um, as you start to look at the circulation on site, here's King Avenue. That's the main road in front of the school, um, Stapleford Road, and again, Red Hill Way. So the front entry is there aligned with our wayfinding uh, element to, to bring people to the front entry and then the bus loop entry. So as we look at uh, the actual uh, circulation on the site, uh, again, orienting you with King Avenue, Stapleford Road, the two uh, parking lots, the one on the right is mostly staff, and then the one on the left is going to be the main parking lot uh, for visitors and also for the drop off. So we bring cars and we get them off of King Avenue for queuing, uh, and then that aligns the uh, drop off with the main entry. Pedestrian access can uh, converge and then have a pathway that does not cross any of the uh, parking areas. The bus loop, buses will come down Stapleford Road, um, access the site back by Red Hill, um, and then loading and unloading would be done along this side. Then the bus loop uh, entry is right there as a collector. There's also um, the service area, secondary parking back behind the dining commons. So uh, learning spaces on site include ball fields, uh, tennis courts, paved play. There's some rooftop classrooms that overlook some demonstration green roof uh, and what we call an outdoor learning commons. The, throughout the site, uh, we've got uh, stormwater management uh, distributed. And the, the floor plan of the uh, building is centered around the idea of a, a main access corridor that uh, divides the building to the public and active zone and the academic and quiet zone. You'll see that the, the main entry and the bus loop entry converge, so really good line of sight for staff uh, to be able to monitor both uh, entries. There's a secure uh, vestibule uh, and lobby, uh, the administrative health suite and guidance. The learning commons is centrally located on this first floor. And then there's uh, cafeteria commons and stage and vocal dance. And then uh, since the stage is there, we've, we've placed the music classrooms adjacent to that. Um, art classroom, uh, which takes advantage of the northern light. And, as this is a three story uh, building, you'll see we've stacked those along that uh, side. Uh, a gymnasium. We also have a, a regional office for Baltimore County Recreation and Parks, and there's also uh, identified um, two multi purpose rooms that are shared with Rec and Park. The, the basic building block of the um, building organization is the typical grade level team. And that includes typical grade classrooms. Uh, and it, in each one would have a special ed or ESL per team so that we can distribute those throughout the building. There's a science classroom. And they're all centered around a collaborative learning area. Um, you'll also see extended learning areas that are paired 
or shared with paired classrooms. And then support spaces that include the uh, the uh, faculty lounge. Second floor, um, it does it, uh, it's standardized and mo uh, sort of a, a uh, building block, so it's the same typical grade classroom, uh, typ uh, typical grade uh, team configuration with typical grade classrooms. Again, the ESL um, science classroom, collaborative learning, and then the extended learning area between the classrooms. Um, support spaces, and then the differences on this floor include the art classroom, uh, world language, flex classrooms and more world language. And on this level, we have centrally located in the building on the second floor, the health sciences lab, and there's also a technology lab. The rooftop classrooms, um, as I mentioned before, overlook some demonstration green uh, roof space. It's limited to one classroom um, in each of those spots. Uh, third floor then is pretty much the same uh, grade level layout, science classroom, collaborative learning areas, extended learning areas, and then the support spaces. And on this floor, uh, art, an art classroom, world language, professional development, and a maker space. And then we have flex, uh, more flex classrooms and world language. So the idea is that uh, through this sort of building block, we can organize grades vertically or horizontally in the different um, grade level houses. I mentioned that the uh, cafeteria commons uh, is a, a, a flexible space, and we've set it up so that in a in, uh, dining situation, it can uh, hold about 504 students, but uh, with the stage we've upgraded, lighting um, and sound system and have telescoping bleachers so we can sort of use this as a, a an auditorium type space with uh, seating for 533. And that's just an example of the, the kind of uh, uh, seating is available. So this is a view of the um, building from the front. So on the left is the gymnasium. It's also has a separate entry for the Rex and Park uh, main entry. And then coming around, you'll see the three um, academic wings. Each of them uh, very similar, but uh, uh, this is the uh, looking at the um, dining commons and the you'll see there, which we'll see a little more uh, renderings of the uh, outdoor learning commons. The outdoor learning commons is a nice place where you can uh, use it for a number of um, uh, functions, either uh, extended learning out from the learning commons or the dining commons, um, sort of like a agora of a town center. And you can see here an image of that. Uh, let me get back. Well, uh, and you can uh, have even outdoor dining or dining on those steps uh, uh, as well, and it's secured with a, a fence. Here's an animation um, to sort of give you a sense of the the building and the scale and the character of it. Um, looking out from the bus loop uh, coming around. Lots of uh, uh, very simple materials, masonry. As we said, uh, each each classroom does have daylighting um, and e each one is is the same so that uh, you can teach any uh, type of curriculum in each uh, space. This is the interior animation uh, walking down that main corridor and we're going to turn into one of the small learning communities and on the right hand side you'll see lockers on the left we've got a concept where we have a open uh, a bathroom with sinks on the outside there's the uh, water coolers and then this this uh, collaborative area and the intent here is that when you come into this this can be used in any number of, of ways but it's intended to have furniture that looks like it's movable so there's not a, a you know a, a taboo to move the furniture around and, and make it useful for what you're going to uh, the size of group you have. This is a typical classroom um, that is a, a, one of the extended learning areas. It has glass into the classroom. We've gone through a lot of a uh, of few shadows in terms of who can see into the classroom. This this does not have some of the um, the shades that would be on there. This is the typical uh, science classroom. Um, just 
uh, casework around the side, so the center of the room is very flexible. Back behind that would have been the uh, um, uh, prep room. This is the the lobby, and then as I had mentioned, uh, the convert convertible uh, uh, dining commons to um, a, a performance space. So with that, um, we started the design in September 2017. We're anticipating a contract award in 2022. And as Pete had said, that we're anticipating uh, finishing up con construction in the fall of uh, 2024. And with that, um, I thank you. And I think we'll we'll take questions. Thank you for the thank presentation. The presentation. Board members, if you have any questions, please. Raise your hand and. Um, I don't see anybody asking questions, so I, I oh, Mr. Thomas, go ahead. You're on mute. Thank you. I was looking for the raise hand function, but I, I couldn't find it. Um, wow, that presentation was amazing. Thank you uh, so much for putting that together and for bringing that to the board. Uh, I just have a question about the bathrooms. Uh, the open space bathrooms with the sinks on the outside. Um, are there necessarily any plans to make any of those bathrooms gender neutral bathrooms or to include a gender neutral bathroom somewhere in the school? Um, just a question. I'm not sure if that would be something that would be determined at this point, but I just wanted to ask. We, we have a single use uh, bathroom that can be used for that purpose on each level um, so that we can take care of that need when necessary. OK, thank you so much. And you mentioned the sustainable design uh, with the uh, lead silver uh, goal. I just wonder if you could expand on that a little bit more uh, just so that uh, you could. Yeah, uh, you know, um, one of the uh, things we're doing is we're, we did did a design process that brought everybody together we call it an integrated design process. So we laid out all the sustainable strategies and worked with uh, BCPS staff to find which ones best fit their uh, their way of working um, and uh, what we develop out of that is a number of strategies. We have a geothermal uh, um, HVAC system, highly efficient. Um, we have, uh, you know, specifying low VOC products. Um, there's a, a an interest in doing some um, uh, environmental education pieces. Um, so a wide range of things, but we really focused a lot on energy efficiency um, because that has a real uh, good payback. Um, but, you know, water uh, saving um, fixtures, uh, the whole gambit. Um, but, you know, we're, we're shooting for uh, silver and, you know, we, we hope along the way we can eat, eat, eat even pick up a couple of extra points and maybe better that. But. OK, well, thank you so much. Thank you. I have a quick question if nobody does. First of all, thank you for the presentation. Um, I think it was brilliant. Um, you know, schools are not just educational centers, but they're also community centers. Um, so my first question is, do you have pedestrian access from, from the main roads? Uh, and second, when is the RFP for the construction going to go out? And when you talked about third question, I said two, sorry. <laughs> um, the third question is you had stormwater management facilities, are you planning on having um, bioretention areas for those rain gardens? What are your plans for stormwater um, retention? Thank you. Uh, your first question was about pedestrian access and, and in that one uh, slide, it showed that we have people, uh, the pedestrian access that can come into the site without having to cross uh, the, uh, uh, the parking areas and then make their way over to the front. Uh, entry. Um, you know, if, if they're coming from the other side of, of uh, uh, King Avenue, they will have to cross that street. Um, and your second question was? The RFP, when is the, oh. um, the timeline for design completion and RFP for construction? So, so let design, me try to answer that question. The design is complete. Uh, we are anticipating that uh, in the early spring of next year, we'll have contracts awarded and we'll come to board for approval. All right. Thank you, Mr. Dixon. 
And, and there was one more question I had about the bioretention facilities. Um, yes, uh, we do have uh, a variety of different. Um, there, there already exists a, um, a, a stormwater management facility on that site. And so we're augmenting that with um, some bioretention uh, and around the, the property. All right, thank you. I think Ms. Hen has a question. Thank you, Ms. Joes. Um, just to clarify, um, Mr. Dixit, because the slide indicated that the contracts would be coming to the board in January of 2022, and you had said early spring. Could you clarify, is that all of the um, construction contracts that would be coming to the board in early spring, and when would we expect to see shovels in the ground? So what we are trying to do is get the contracts awarded anywhere from January to April. There'll, there'll be multi primes for this and uh, exact date is not known at this time due to the process for Build to Learn Act funding that we have to go through. So that's the answer to your first question. Um, what we are hoping that within two months after contracts are awarded or earlier, they should be shoveling the ground. So I wouldn't want to give an exact date at this time, but we are trying to expedite it as much as we can. Sure, thank you. And and thank you for the outstanding presentation, gentlemen. This is really exciting um, for me. Um, personally, this has been a long time coming, so to, to see it is, is quite exciting. Um, I did have a couple of other um, brief questions. Um, the first regarding parking. Um, did you happen to mention, and I may have missed it, how many parking spaces are included in this design? And is there a separate um, area designated for faculty or staff parking versus um, other general parking? Uh, yeah, it, it, uh, I can't remember the number right off the top of my head of the total parking, but we do have uh, separate uh, staff parking and visitor and overflow parking. Um, if you saw the part of the presentation that showed where the drop off was on the left hand side is the um, visitor and overflow parking. We also um, were striping the uh, the bus loop for some uh, overflow parking if there was some events at night. OK, because I know um, King Avenue and their plans to widen that. Am I correct in, in that in handling some of the the traffic because it really can't support street parking along that and that that was some of the neighborhood concerns with regards to area parking and, and neighborhood parking. There is a, a, a turn lane that we're adding. Um, I'm not I can't speak to uh, what we're not widening um, that road under this contract. Okay. Except, for, except for the turn lane. Okay, and Mr. Dixit might be able to speak with that to that. Um, what what is the final student student count or capacity? Four, uh, 1410. 1410. Okay. So we are not aware of street widening. If I do find out, I'll let you know. Okay, thank you, Mr. Dixit. There. I happen to work across the street and they're they're working on the street um, as I speak. So I wasn't sure what what type of work that was doing and whether it was supporting this project or not. So um, that would be great if you you have any information you could share with the board on that. So 1410, do we know um, of that which have there been allocations um, made to the surrounding schools or is that a, a, some information you could provide to the board outside of this meeting? And, and I know that some of that will be determined by the um, boundary study, but yes. is that preliminary information or estimates that you, you have that you could provide us? So at this time, we don't. I think you have pretty much answered your own question that there will be a redistricting uh, study after this project is completed. And soon after this, we'll be coming to you for Pine Grove Middle School renovation, and that'll add seats. So with the seats added by this school and by Pine Grove Middle School, uh, it'll go a long way of relieving overcrowding and definitely need a redistricting study at that time. 
Sure. Um, have the schools, yes, and the final question is, have the schools been identified that will be um, impacted by, by this project definitively? Not at this time. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Uh, if there are no more questions, I think we can um, adjourn this portion of the meeting. Thank you very much. Madam, Madam, Madam Chair, Chair um, Joe, this is Kathleen Causey. Go ahead, Ms. Causey. Good afternoon. I had put a um, question in the chat. Oh, I, I thought there was a comment. There is a question. Uh, if you want to read it, Ms. Kelsey, go ahead. Thank you. Um, I wanted to uh, thank everyone for the presentation, um, especially the video moving through the building. Um, in discussing our capital construction program recently, um, Mr. Bob Grill, the IAC at MSCE, uh, sent an email to the school system and the board about the importance of right sizing a new school and it requires a lot of discipline to create educational specifications that minimize gross square footage and avoid expensive attributes um, such that it costs as much to own and operate a facility and it's mostly based upon the size as uh, well as the initial cost to construct. Um, so I am curious uh, based on his comments, also that it was important to maintain fiscally sustainable solutions for each project um, <clears throat> because of how expensive the entire portfolio of facilities is. So per your design, what is the square footage per student compared to the MSDE guideline for middle school students? Uh, what is the estimated construction cost per square foot? How does this compare with the IAC guidelines for construction costs per square foot? And then does the design construction cost per square foot include the site work? And the last question is, uh, would you discuss if you would consider the, if, if you could discuss what design attributes were incorporated for efficient lifetime costs of the building? And all of that's in the chat to make it easier for you. So let me let me yeah. try to answer some of your questions. So all of our costs are based on state's formula. Uh, and and they are based on the educational program that that's required for the school. Uh, also, the design has been reviewed by state IAC at every step. So the design is not an isolated item. It is it goes through three or four different steps of state reviews and their comments are incorporated as we get them. Uh, finally, all of these designs, including this one, uh, they are carefully studied for energy efficiency. That's part of the maintenance cost and the type of construction material and the way it's designed to to have the maximum benefit of solar load, for example, in winter time and minimize energy consumption. The type of fuel that is used is the most efficient fuel in terms of cost. Uh, the mechanical systems that have been included in there, the boilers, the chillers and, and the DDC system for controls, they are all there to improve the efficiency of the building. So that's some of the things after that I'll ask Mr. Brown if he can add something to uh, Ms. Causey's questions. Um, yeah, I, I would say that during the whole process of, of designing this, especially considering that it would be on a park site, um, we have been very conscious on keeping the footprint as, as compact as possible and of, of finding all the efficiencies we can even through the uh, programming, um, we looked at the program and worked with the BCPS staff to talk about what what the kinds of spaces were and if they had two things that looked very similar. You know, we we tried to pare down because we know that it, it's driven by square foot costs, and uh, we went through a lot of effort to make sure that we had appropriate space 
but you'll see that we do not have, you know, exceedingly wide uh, corridors. Um, we don't have big volumes of space. Uh, we try to right size all of the program elements and put them together in a, in a very appropriate way, uh, working with um, the, uh, the staff. So um, I, I don't think that uh, from a square foot um, efficiency that uh, you'll find many, um, many things that we sort of over, went overboard on. Um, in terms of the life cycle costs, we do the traditional uh, life cycle costs to be reviewed by the IAC. Um, we've got one of the most efficient um, HVAC systems with a, 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 a geothermal system, and uh, that you know that that most most folks think that um, that the well most folks the the first cost sort of uh, scare them off of ge doing geothermal, but in the long run for the life cycle of the building, it's one of the best decisions you can make, and that's it's it's good to see that that's. Uh, was a driving factor um, for designing this. So I don't know if that answered all your questions, but um, that's what I could offer at the moment. Thank you, that's very helpful. And I appreciate the work that is done um, by you all with your professional um, certifications and expertise in doing that work during the design process. And I uh, heartily agree with the geothermal aspect um, being efficient and it's also um, can be cleaner, cleaner source of energy as the grid uh, becomes a cleaner source of energy. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, gentlemen, for your presentation and for all of your design. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Good afternoon. I now call to order the meeting of the Building and Contracts Committee for Monday, November 8, 2021, in accordance with the Board of Education's amended resolution approved at the October 13, 2020 board meeting. In the event of a medical or health emergency related to COVID-19, the board chair in consultation with the vice chair and the superintendent may declare that a board meeting or a board committee meeting be held remotely in its entirety. Without the physical presence of board members or in a hybrid manner with only some individual board members participating remotely. Subject to the establishment of a mechanism that would allow each board member the opportunity to fully participate in the meeting despite not being physically present. And that would allow the public to also remotely attend those portions of the meeting that are open pursuant to the Maryland Open Meetings Act by being able to listen and or view those portions of the meeting. As a result, today's meeting is being held virtually and broadcast. In order to conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board committee members will say their names before making and seconding a motion, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Ms. Slate, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Ms. Jones. Present. Mr. McMillian. Ms. Hen? Present. Mr. Kuhn? Present. Mr. Offerman? Present. Thank you. Ms. Slate, thank you for that. Could you please call the roll call of staff members participating in today's meeting? Dr. Boswell McComas. Present. Dr. Monique Wheatley Phillip. Present. Dr. Zarchin. Ms. Ann Ran Runfar Sangavroon. Mr. Corns. Present. Mr. Dixit. 
Present. Dr. Elmendorf. Present. Mr. Patillo. Present. Mr. Saris. Present. Mr. Plate. Present. If there are additional staff participating that were not mentioned, please state your name. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Slade. Uh, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Building and Contracts Committee for November 8, 2021. Um, we will begin with the first contract. Mr. Saris, please state your name for the record and proceed presenting with the first contract. Thank you. This is George Saris, Executive Director of Fiscal Services. And the first item we have PCR 29608, Assistive Technology software. This is a consent to the assignment of this contract from Envision Technology Inc. to Kurzweil Education Inc. There is one awarded vendor on the original contract approved by the board in October 2017. Are there any questions committee members? Please state your name and question. Ms. Joes, this is Ms. Hen. Please go ahead, Ms. Hen. Thank you. I understand another board member um, had requested usage information for this product, and I know we're just, the board is just being asked to approve the reassignment, but was this information provided? I did not receive that request, so I'm not able to answer. I can answer that, Ms. Hen. We sent it forward to be included in the um, board weekly update. OK, was that information? So can anyone speak to whether or not that was included? I don't recall seeing it in the weekly update. I will have to go and see if I can find uh, last week's update, but we did send it forward to do that. I, I believe it was provided in the weekly update. The usage statistics? I believe so in the course. Well, um, I'll have to check through, but I remember reading through that. I have it open right now. I see some. Thank you. Some Thank usage. you. Thank you. Any Dr. other questions, board members? Mr. Mr. Q? Q? Yes, Go I ahead. have a question. Thank you. Um, I was looking at the notes here, and it says, I'm just curious what's happening here, because it says that. Um, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I lost it for a second. It talked about um, the the fact that the original equipment manufacturer is um, assuming and taking over sales and support and everything else. Um, so it, it talks about Envision Technologies distribution team is being retired. It, what exactly happened here? Can you explain that? Did Kurzweil buy it back or did Envision Technology fail? I'm just curious as to, I'm looking at the second bullet um, and, and it says that the contract's being handed over to Kurzweil Education since Envision Technology's distribution team is retired. That just sounds like a nice way of saying that they're were fired. I, I I just don't quite understand what's happening and any clarification would be useful. Yeah, I think George, I can um, give some clarity sure. here. We basically received a letter um, from Envision and Kurzweil and that was the language that was used is that I think Envision is a small company or was a small company and the folks who who own and work for Envision um, actually retired. And so since that that organization doesn't exist to be able to be a distributor for Kurzweil anymore, we're going directly through Kurzweil. OK, thank you. I, it just seemed odd. Um, it does. <laughs> so, so I had I to ask the question. I just want to make sure we weren't grabbing on to a failing. OK, all right, thank you. That's that's the end of my questions then. No more questions thank for you. this. 
And my recollection is going back some number of years that we originally dealt with Kurzweil and then this relationship with Envision arose and now it has dissolved. Thank you, Mrs. Harris. Uh, hearing no more questions, please proceed with presenting the second contract. The next item is ASI 806-22, Digital Media Instructional Resources. This is a new contract for web-based repository of educational videos and resources to students and teachers in grades K to 8 for the Office of Digital Safety, Educational Technology, and Library Media. Approval is requested for a three-year contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $850,000. Are there any questions, committee members? Hearing none, Mrs. Sarris, please proceed with presenting the next contract. The next item, uh, GDA 304-21, Mass Notification Emergency Communication System. This is the new competitively bid contract for a Mass Notification Emergency Communication System for the Office of Enterprise Applications. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with the option for a five-year extension with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $900,000. Thank you, Mr. Sarris. Mr. Kuhn. Thank you. Mr. Sarris, what is the genesis of this contract? Why, why do we need this communication vehicle? The, the system with various providers has been in place uh, for a long time to provide telephone calls um, as well as other mass notifications in multiple languages. Um, I expect that it's still valid because not everybody yet has uh, computer access and so uh, we still do telephone notifications. So Mr. Sarris may I also add in that um, th this, uh, Mr. Kuhn, this is also the system that is utilized to do attendance call outs um, in the morning. Um, and this is also what we use for um, uh, parents to be able to opt into mass uh, SMS or text message um, information, uh, schools and the schoolhouses use this for uh, multiple purposes for doing phone outs to invite uh, parents in for various uh, activities in the evening, uh, advertisement of PTA. Uh, so as uh, Mr. Saris alluded to, we've been using a system um, to do this work for, for several years as uh, it got a strong placement in um, our uh, school system uh, for doing everything from SMS to phone to email notifications, uh, particularly with uh, inclement weather as well. Okay, so just so that I'm clear, this is, you, you went through the process to bid this out and it's just a new contract that, that is doing something that we currently have in place and we wanna continue having that functionality. Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Um, Corns. Uh, if there are no other questions, Mrs. Saris, please proceed with the next contract. Thank you. Uh, the next item, CWA 104-22, cloud-based school lunch system. This is a new cooperative contract uh, to provide a cloud-based school lunch system for the Office of Food and Nutrition Services. Approval is requested for a three-year contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $278,289. And the board may remember that uh, we brought back a, a short-term contract in July uh, because the, agents, the lead agency on this cooperative contract was in the process of, uh, of rebidding and reissuing it. And that has since taken place 
And so we're able to present this longer term contract for this uh, product that we've been using for decades, it, except that now it's in a cloud based environment. Thank you, Mr. Sarah's committee members. Any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Sarah's, please proceed to the next contract. Thank you. The next item, LLY 40622, Workforce Management Systems and Related Products and Solutions. Uh, this is a new cooperative contract for timekeeping software for the Department of Fiscal Services. Approval is requested for a four month contract with the option for three one year extensions with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $2.85 million. And this pricing is based on the full uh, three year, four month term. Committee members, any questions? Mr. Kuhn? Looks like he's... Ms. Hen? No, thanks. Yeah, we Ms. did. Uh, I did prepare an update for the board Friday, so hopefully there was enough uh, information there to answer most questions. And I appreciate that, Mr. Sarah's that update um, did answer a lot of my questions as I read through it. Uh, so thank you for that detailed update. Uh, hearing no more questions, please proceed with the next contract, Mr. Okay. Sarah's. Um, Pete, do you want to take this or would you like me to? No. I'll <clears throat> take it, George. So the okay. next contract Thanks. is MWE. 803-22, that's modification, auditorium restoration at Delaney High School. So the request is to uh, modify the contract by $82,934. It'll provide, it has provided because the work is completed now, I understand. And this is for the restro rest restoration work for the damage caused by the fire at Delaney High School. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Um, committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with the next contract. So the next contract is PCR 241-12. As most of you know that uh, uh, we buy energy commodities, that's electricity and natural gas predominantly, uh, but through BrickPack, that is an organization that consists of 24 members. Uh, energy is sold on, on market, on commodity market, and the BrickPack organization has a consultant, and this contract is our share of the consultant's fee that BrickPack uses, and there is no additional amount. The contract is extended for seven more months since the entity has changed from Baltimore uh, City to Baltimore County that will be managing this project. So we are going to rebid it. Uh, and th so this contract is for extension of that energy consultants contract. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Uh, and I do want to note that Mr. McMillian has joined us. So Mr. McMillian, do you have any questions? No, thank you. Committee members, any questions? Ms. Jones, I have a question. Yes, Ms. Uh, Mr. Dixit, um, can, what does BRICPAC stand for? The full name is uh, Baltimore Regional County Regional Committee for um, this is Regional Cooperative Purchasing Consortium. That's what it uh, the, the fully expanded name is. 
and and do we as an entity it, does the county buy energy for us in, or do we make those decisions ourselves or how does that work so brick pack knows the total quantity of electricity and gas that is needed for all 24 members so by joining together as a group there is a scale of economy there is our economy of scale and there's consistency in our policy and risk is minimized by a thorough organized thought out purchasing policy and this consultant helps BrickPack do that. OK, and, and just so I'm clear, um, this is being extended at, at no increasing cost just to kind of line things up with Baltimore County taking over. You said something about Baltimore City transferring yeah. it to Baltimore County. You are correct. OK, and, and, and then been, we have been doing it for last 15 or so years and it has um, it has resulted in large savings for us. Well, that's that's great to know and to to be honest with you, I've been very interested in knowing more about how energy purchasing works throughout our organization. Um, and I think it sounds like we have a good story to, to tell and I don't want to go into detail here and derail uh, Ms. Chose's meeting at this point, but I, I would like to learn more about it because I don't quite understand how it's all managed. Um, uh, so perhaps at some point we can either set something up or or you can make it available for the whole board because I think it would be very, very useful. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, I'll be more than glad to do that. And Mr. Kuhn, you can certainly request that on the agenda tomorrow. Um, because I know you've been really interested in the whole energy efficiency as am I, so thank you. Uh, any more questions, committee members? Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with the next contract. So the next contract is MBU-508-17. This is purchase of floor care machines and associated equipment. Uh, the purpose here is uh, twofold. This is a consent to assignment of this contract from Lewis Industrial Products to B2B Industrial Packaging, also known as Quaker City Paper, and also add $550,000 to this contract in order for us to be able to buy floor care machines. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Uh, committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed to the next contract. The next contract is JME 50422, is for serving line and kitchen renovations at Cockeysville Middle School. The contract consists of all labor material and any other work required for installation of serving line and kitchen renovations at Cockeysville Middle School. There are five bidders and the lowest bidder is Baltimore contractors uh, in the amount of one million one sixty six oh eighty eight plus the contingency amount. The project is part of the capital improvement plan that board has already approved. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with the next contract. The next contract is ASI-803-22. This is for school locker repair and installation services and parts and supplies. And it uses um, operating and capital funds. The term of the contract is five years, ending in 11 26 uh, fifty two percent of the budget was used for capital projects and forty eight percent for the operating budget. Mr. Thank Jones, you, Mr. I have a, I have a question for Mr. Pete. Sure. Go ahead, Mr. Pete. Mr. Pete, back in the day, 
I can remember there were a couple crews of teachers that were hired during the summer to go around the county schools and repair uh, the lockers. Does that still exist, those crews? Yes, for repairs to, uh, to a limited degree, we still do that. And parts for that uh, repair uh, could be purchased under this contract. And that's okay, the operating so budget piece of the expenditure. Yeah. So there's still crews of teachers that are hired during the summer to do this? Not crews of teachers. It is a, a, a contract that is used for buying parts and our technicians repair lockers. OK, that was now, my I question. Don't, I don't know. I don't know when teachers were hired and under what conditions, so I cannot uh, speak about that. Yeah, well, th that was back in the day. I, I, you know, like you, you're aware that I was here 35 years. Uh, so that was back in the day, and I was just curious if that was still happening. So during the school year, if, if a school has locker issues, then they can put in a work request. Is there a specific Baltimore County employee, a couple guys that come out to do that? Or does that fall back onto the general custodians to take care of those lockers? So it depends on complexity of the repair. So the first part of the question is, how is it requested? So the building uh, operations supervisor submits a work order for locker or for any other request. It is electronically transmitted to us. When we receive it, we look at what is the most cost effective way of doing it. If we have the labor available and technicians available uh, and parts are there or we can purchase it, we take care of it. There's a priority established. If it is of more complex nature or may need replacement, uh, then we use contract. OK, and Mr. Pete, thank you. And, and I just, you know, the, the average person I don't think realizes just how many lockers are in our school buildings. You know, one school building would have, you know, over a thousand lockers in the hallway, plus all the lockers in the, you know, the team room lockers, the, the locker room lockers. I mean, it's a, that's a major task, really, to keep all those you know, up and, and running and operative for the for the students and for the, the different coaches and teachers and everything. So thank you very much for answering my question. Thank you. Any thank other you, questions? Any more questions, board members? Hearing none, I will now entertain a motion to recommend that items one through 10 be moved to the full board for approval. So the question is on the recommended approval of contracts 1 to 10. So, so moved, moved, Offerman. Thank you, Mr. Offerman. Do I have a second? Second, Ms. Hen. Thank you, Ms. Hen. Uh, those in favor, please say aye. Those opposed, please say no. Ms. Slate, please take the roll. Ms. Hen. Yes. Mr. Kuhn. Aye, aye. Mr. <laughs> McMillian. Yes. Mr. Offerman. Aye. And Ms. Jose. Aye. Thank you. The ayes have it. <laughs> there being five in the affirmative, the motion passes. Contracts one through ten will be moved forward to the board. Is there any further business, Mr. Dixit, Mrs. Harris, board members? Because there is no further business, the meeting okay. is adjourned. Have a good evening, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you everyone. Thanks. Goodbye.